This video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. Genuine nice. shampoo. Nice. Good job. International food here in the International <laughs> Space Station. We got yakitori. We got Russian chicken with rice there. Having a pork chop. <laughs> pork chop. Pork chop. <laughs> I like the oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. Quite this cute. is the way to eat ah, on the top of the world. Sriracha is one of the world's most favorite hot sauces. It started in a seaside town in Thailand and became a household item throughout Southeast Asia. A man named David Tran experimented with the recipe before he was forced to leave home for being an unwanted minority. After being stranded at sea for a month, he was placed in America when no other country would accept him. There, he tried his luck at selling his own recipe. Everyone told him it wouldn't be successful. Before we get into the story, our team would like to thank our sponsor Raid Shadow Legends, a dark fantasy game with over 13 million users and a 4.5 rating. Here is why we're hooked onto the game. The game takes place in the Kingdom of Teleria where the Dark Lord Syroth casts a dark curse. A powerful guardian raises an ancient Telerian warrior from the dead to restore peace and harmony. The warrior must gather as many ancient shards as possible, special crystals that summon past warriors, to assemble an army of champions and defeat the Dark Lord Syroth. What we love about the game is that you can collect up to 500 champions who all have unique skills. Every battle you win gives you experience points to level up your champions. If you're strapped on time, you can switch from battling on manual to auto mode and let the game fight for you. It's rewarding to see your champions become more powerful than when you first summoned them. Last month, Raid just released their biggest ever update. The main event here is the Doom Tower. It's a giant tower with 120 floors, a bunch of secret challenge rooms, and 12 seriously badass bosses to take on. We've been waiting for this for a long time and can't wait to dive in. You can easily get a head start in the game clicking the link in our description below. New players will receive a free Void Champion Bulwark, an Ancient Shard, 50 Gems, an XP Booster, and some Energy Refills. All this treasure will be waiting for you here. In the 1900s, a Thai businessman named Kim Sua Tim Krichang from the seaside town of Siracha traveled to Myanmar, Cambodia, and Laos. He discovered that each country had different sauces, sweet, salty, sour, but nothing that combined all three. When he returned home, he decided to make his own, one that would suit the Thai palate and could be used for any dish. The result was a hot sauce made with brick jifa peppers, garlic, vinegar, sugar, and sea salt. It took weeks and sometimes months to prepare so that the flavors blended together seamlessly, none overpowering the other. Gimsua insisted on only using perfectly red peppers, peeling and pickling the garlic and boiling big chunks of salt. Afterwards, he left the mixture in the sun to dry before fermenting it in casks. Later, his daughter Tanom used his recipes as a cocktail sauce for seafood. It was a hit amongst her friends who encouraged her to sell it. She took their advice and called it Sriracha Panik. She didn't bother to patent the recipe since it was something her family wanted to share and the ingredients weren't a secret. In fact, they were written on the side of the bottles for everyone to see. Sriracha Panik quickly became popular in Thailand, so much that others started to make their own and eventually, different brands could be found throughout Southeast Asia, including Vietnam. Little did Danom know, her father's recipe would also make its way to America. But first, the maker behind a new brand would need to survive being stranded at sea. In the late 1900s, 30-year-old David Tran traded most of his life savings into gold. He and his family were no longer welcome in Vietnam and needed the means to start a new life. To the new communist regime, they were viewed as suspicious minorities. While Vietnam had been their home for years, they were not ethnic Vietnamese. They are Teochew, an ethnic group from southern China. 
Like others from their community, they fled their homes during the famine and migrated to neighboring countries in search of better opportunities. After settling in Saigon, they worked hard to start a new life and make a living. They even managed to buy just enough land to do little farming. David saw the small piece of land as a huge opportunity to start a new business, growing and selling fresh chili peppers. Unfortunately, he failed at making a profit. He couldn't even cover the cost of labor since there was too much competition. Still, David didn't give up on his new business. Instead, he pivoted towards making a hot sauce with chili, soybean oil, garlic, salt, vinegar, saute spice, and preservatives. He called it pepper saute. Afterwards, he and his family bottled the sauce in recycled food baby jars, hopped on their bikes, and sold it to local markets. The pivot wasn't exactly worth the payoff. Sales were only decent. Not long after, that would become the least of their worries. In a Radio Hanoi broadcast tonight, Vietnam admitted Chinese troops are advancing. As relations between China and Vietnam became strained, the government pressured David and his family to leave Vietnam. They were also told to hand over their home and their possessions and pay their way out. David managed to pay for him and his family to board the Hui Pho, a bogus, dilapidated ship. It claimed Bangkok, Thailand as its origin and Kaohsiung, Taiwan as port of call. While the ship had 1,500 capacity, David and his family found themselves crowded among 3,000 passengers. They had little hope for the future and could have never imagined that it was the start of building an empire. After five days at sea, Hui Fong's captain anchored the ship off the coast of Hong Kong unannounced. He claimed his passengers were shipwrecked refugees he rescued off the coast of Vietnam. British authorities were suspicious and refused entry since Hong Kong was not their first port of call, and they were facing a refugee problem. This is an immigration control area. You are to leave immediately. Do you understand? At the time, there were 100,000 refugees arriving from China, straining Hong Kong's housing facilities and social welfare programs. So David and his family sat stranded on the Hui Fong through Christmas and into the new year. It wasn't until the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees intervened that they were given temporary asylum. Later, they were placed in Boston. Like many refugees, David became homesick. He struggled to get used to the cold winters or find fresh chili peppers. When he discovered they grew in California, he quickly moved his family to Los Angeles. After settling in, he headed towards Chinatown and picked up an imported hot sauce. He was so disappointed in the flavor that he considered making his own pepper saute again. A quick look at the grocery store shelves convinced him it was the right move. The market was much different when compared to Vietnam and prepared foods were more popular. When David got started, he didn't have a plan. Instead, he simply bought fresh chili peppers and mixed his pepper saute recipe by hand. Afterwards, he sold it door to door out of his Chevy van. Within his first month, he made a few thousand dollars. And as the months went by, he sold even more. Eventually, he realized that he needed to buy more chilies and a bigger space. He asked his bank for a loan, but they rejected him so he had no choice but to use his family's savings. It was a terrifying risk. I really had no idea how big the market was. After risking everything, David had a lucky start. He found a small shop with low rent in Chinatown that he could use to scale his business. Afterwards, he named his company Hui Fa so that he would never forget his journey to the U.S. For his company logo, he chose his zodiac sign, a rooster. And for his packaging, he picked green caps to symbolize the green stem of a fresh chili pepper. To scale production, he spent a lot of money on new machines. But it turned out to be a waste since they didn't work well. With no engineering experience, he taught himself how to cut metal and weld joints to modify them. Fortunately, it worked and allowed him to experiment with new products. At the time, a second wave of Vietnamese refugees were moving to LA, so David thought about creating a hot sauce that they could enjoy with pho. 
But then he realized that the 1984 Olympics were approaching and that it would be better to create something that everyone can enjoy. I remember seeing Heinz 57 catch up and thinking, the 1984 Olympics are coming. How about I come up with a Tran 84, something that I can sell to everyone. David's new hot sauce was made with fresh chili peppers, garlic, vinegar, sugar, and salt. While it was based on the popular sriracha panik recipe, David used fresh peppers instead of sun-dried ones. And in honor of the original, he named it after the seaside town where it originated, Sriracha. When he tried to sell it to his suppliers, they turned him away. You won't be successful, they warned. It's too spicy. They weren't the only ones that doubted him. Even his friends suggested he make it sweeter or add a tomato base. Hot sauce must be hot, David insisted. If you don't like it hot, use less. We don't make mayonnaise here. David left his new hot sauce the way it was, and not long after, it found its way in noodle shops and dim sum palaces. Since it cost very little, owners would plop down full bottles on tables, making it easier for customers to use and remember the brand. Had it cost more, they would have likely placed it into side dishes to conserve supplies. To David, it was a dream come true. It was his goal to make a rich man's sauce at a poor man's price. That way, everyone can enjoy it. While he never hired a sales team or advertised, diners hunted sriracha down in grocery stores, and restaurant chains incorporated the sauce into its menu. By 2009, David was selling 10 million bottles of sriracha a year. And just one year later, Bon Appetit magazine named it Ingredient of the Year. As the years went by, his sriracha developed a cult following that he had never seen for a mere condiment. Some have said it was harder to get into the factory than the Pentagon. Today, Hui Fang remains a family business empire that refuses to sell out. While they now offer three products, Sriracha continues to be their most popular. In interviews, David often says he wouldn't have found success without his hardworking family and employees. He also shares key advice for anyone wanting to start their own business. <laughs> This is the story of how a Thai recipe helped a Chinese Vietnamese refugee create one of the world's most favorite hot sauces. For more inspiring stories about today's most successful brands, don't forget to subscribe to our channel.